Hello, everyone. Uh, good to see you here for another event of LATAM Startups. Uh, this event is part of the LATAM uh, Startups uh, Spotlight series. And today we are presenting Colombia in the Spotlight. My name is Miriam Lazarte. I'm the CEO of LATAM Startups. And I'm really thrilled to be today presenting Colombia in the Spotlight. We have an amazing, uh, you know, number of leaders that are coming here to discuss today uh, how the startup ecosystem is growing in Colombia in particular and how Canadian companies can uh, you know interact with Colombian counterparts uh, if, if you are a startup in Canada or in Colombia or any other part you will learn today from our white paper uh, we are releasing today a new white paper and you are going to learn also uh, from these amazing speakers that today are going to be sharing some information about the tech ecosystem in Colombia. So I'm going to start uh, first, uh, you know, by thanking our corporate partners. Uh, so we have OVH Cloud, Ocean Law, Bright Immigration, Kingston Economic Development Corporation, and Hamilton Niagara Invest. Uh, thank you to them because uh, because of them we can actually run all these events, and we have more events coming up in the next uh, days. And uh, you know, our first presentation actually is coming from uh, Claudio Ramirez. He's the head of the trade investment and innovation section in Colombia. Uh, he wanted to be with us uh, today. He is actually in the public right now, uh, but do some uh, technicalities he cannot be speaking, but uh, he sent us the, uh, uh, you know, a short video for all of you to see. So I'm going to present this video. Good morning. My name is Claudio Ramirez. I'm the head of the Trade, Investment, and Innovation section at the Kenyan Embassy in Colombia. I want to start by thanking Latam Startup for inviting me to the spotlight on Colombia, and I want to welcome you all to the event. Now, I think it's very fitting that we're doing this in August of 2021, because it marks the month, the 10th anniversary of Canada's free trade agreement with Colombia. When it was ratified in August of 2011, Canada became the first G7 country to have an FTA with Colombia. So we showed early on our confidence in the market. The data shows that we were right. In the last decade, our merchandise trade with Colombia has increased by over 20%. Our services trade with Colombia has increased by 133%. And Canada's investment in Colombia has increased by 512%, reaching $5.7 billion last year. All of Canada's major pension funds have shown confidence in Colombia by investing here, as well as over 100 Canadian companies in all different sectors. Now, all of this is no coincidence. First of all, the free trade agreement provides rules that are clear, that are transparent, that are fair. It protects Canada's investment. It protects Canada's intellectual property in Colombia. But also, Colombia has shown to be an example of good governance in the region. Last year, it became the only the third country in Latin America and the Caribbean to become a member of the OECD. That means that Colombia will continue on the path of economic reform, improving its investment climate and business environment. So I hope you have a great event this year and I welcome you to do business in Colombia and to use the Canadian Trade Commissioner Service and the Canadian Embassy. Thank you all. And that was uh, Claudio Ramirez, head of the Trade Investment and Innovation Section in uh, Colombia. Uh, so for some of you that don't know, uh, the Trade Commissioner Service is pretty much uh, helping, uh, you know, so many uh, companies, uh, uh, Canadian companies in, uh, you know, Latin American countries and so many other countries. So I will encourage you to be, uh, you know, in contact with the Trade Commissioner Service. They have been amazing with us. They have been amazing with our startups. And I'm pretty sure Claudio, uh, if he's here, he may be connecting with some of you interested uh, into expanding in the Colombian market. Now I'm going to continue with a very interesting part uh, for some of you who has been connected with our uh, um, community. You know, every two years we release a new white paper about uh, you know the Latin American startup ecosystems. And today, again, we are talking about Colombia. So the Colombia uh, startup ecosystem. I'm going to be presenting today the white paper. And after that, we are going to be talking with three experts uh, that are going to be uh, you know, sharing their opinion about uh, you know, how the startup ecosystem in Colombia is growing and how people can actually take advantage 
of uh, you know what what is the situation that is coming up uh, after the pandemic and uh, you know what plans we can do in 2022 so again uh bear with me i'm going to be sharing uh my screen here uh to present the white paper so um here it is we have the white paper hold on one second it's coming up there we go yeah so uh, when considering the economies in the globe, uh, Latin America is often uh, not mentioned and the opportunities in the region uh, are, are, are normally ignored in favor of other global uh, developments. Um, you need to know that the country, uh, you know, Colombia is geographically, uh, is, is the third largest country geographically speaking in the region and the fourth economically in Latin America. So that's why, uh, you know, for us, it's extremely important to talk about Colombia. Many people in Canada has actually, uh, you know, reached out to us many times to ask us about the ecosystem in Colombia. And again, before the presentation, I love to uh, say thank you to our corporate sponsors and community partners, Ostia Law, Bright Immigration, OVH Cloud, Kingston Economic Development uh, Corporation, and, and Invest uh, Hamilton Niagara. They have helped us uh, with this event and as well, you know, with their support, uh, we are putting together these white papers. So the white paper is right now available in our website. Um, so you can download it by free. And I'm going to start talking about some key points of the ecosystem. Uh, so you will see uh, in the in the next slides, we are going to be talking about the economic uh, overview, the uh, general uh, about the startup ecosystem, general points that you're going to find in there. Uh, you will remember for some of you that have been in our uh, other events that, uh, you know, Colombia uh, has been booming in certain sectors and we will see if uh, that actually continue uh, um, uh, thriving in, in 2019, 2020, you know, in the last two years when we were releasing this white paper. And of course, uh, we are also talking about some challenges. Uh, people need to be aware about, uh, you know, when you are always doing business in another country, there's always challenges, no matter which country you go. And of course, uh, the resources that you may have. So I'm going first uh, with the economic overview, which is uh, very important, uh, you know, for people to know. So yeah, uh, Colombia has more than 51 million people currently uh, in Colombia, and 80% of that population actually are living in the urban areas. And Colombia is the third largest country in Latin America, as I mentioned at the beginning. Um, so in, is the 20 largest uh, in the world uh, with a median age of 30 uh, years old. You can see we have a lot of young people in Colombia, and this is also young talent uh, for some companies that are looking forward to maybe hiring young talent uh, from uh, other com uh, other uh, countries. So uh, government uh, is speaking, you know, Colombia has been with a, a new president, uh, relatively new, he's, he's already in, in his third year, uh, Ivan Duque. Uh, so you may know some of the politics in, in Colombia. I don't want to go too much into that area, but if you want to read a little bit about what the government has done, you know, like what type of government it is, you will find this part in the white paper. Uh, the education in Colombia continues to be held back by various problems, but including uh, sometimes a school infrastructure uh, and some other uh, challenges that may have, but uh, it continue also improving, uh, you know, uh, for uh, in regards of the politics that are putting together uh, for uh, schools and, uh, and so on. Language speaking, uh, we are still, uh, you know, um, reminding everyone that Colombia speaks Spanish. That's the first, uh, you know, language. Uh, some people actually speak English. Uh, the English proficiency sometimes doesn't favor that much the country. But, uh, you know, if you are talking with the startups and you are talking in the tech ecosystem, you are actually going to find out that there are, uh, you know, many people in the startup ecosystem, in the technology ecosystem that actually speak English. So in some other, uh, uh, you know, um, aspects that you should know about the economy is that Colombia is a free market, it's a free economy. Uh, many people sometimes have uh, the wrong perception. I think that perception has been changing over the years and, um, you know, people know more right now what Colombia is doing in regards of technology and innovation. But it's important also to know that Colombia 
has free trade agreements with partners such as um, the United States, uh, the European Union, uh, Canada, and of course, one of the biggest part of all this partnership is the Pacific Alliance. For some of you that uh, probably are new uh, listening about the Pacific Alliance, this is an economic bloc in Latin America that is basically the counterpart of Brazil in terms of population and GDP. Pacific Alliance is pretty strong. It's composed by Colombia, Mexico, Peru, and Chile. And if you have seen in our presentations, we are starting uh, you know, the events with the Pacific Alliance countries because uh, these disagreements are pretty important, uh, you know, and the number of investment that, uh, you know, uh, is getting Pacific Alliance is is, is, is really relevant. Um, the other part uh, that you need, you need to know about Pacific Alliance is that it has a strong connection with Canada, and this is important for any free trade agreement for companies that are looking forward, uh, you know, to, um, uh, to be uh, doing business with Colombia. It may have actually some favor for Canadian companies to have a trade agreement with Colombia and with Pacific Alliance in general. Um, so other points uh, that you may need to know about this, uh, you know, about the economic overview of Colombia is that according with uh, the Doing Business 2020 report by the World Bank, uh, Colombia ranks as one of the best countries in the world in terms of uh, minimum capital uh, necessity to start a business. Uh, we are going to talk more about this uh, with our leaders in the chat. Uh, so after the presentation of this white paper. Uh, so Colombia made starting business easier by removing requirements on uh, opening uh, bank accounts and obtain uh, invoice authorizations, for example. Uh, the other part that is important uh, for the startups and for people that are here with business is the entrepreneurial environment. Colombian ranks for uh, on the list of countries with the greatest number of innovative ventures and in, in early stage and also ranks for it uh, with the best system conditions for entrepreneurship in Latin America. In, in the region, Colombia ranks fifth and in the world, uh, Colombia is 22nd. And uh, we believe that, uh, you know, post pandemic, these numbers will be actually uh, improving a lot because Colombia is, uh, is a really entrepreneurial ecosystem and uh, you will find there too many type of startups and too many ways, uh, you know, to deal with uh, different type of companies. In regards of technology and technology adoption, Colombia government is pushing uh, for innovation and technolo technological adoption across the region. And the goal for the government is to have over 65% of the population uh, uh, working online. I will have the uh, pro-Colombia trade commissioner uh, in a few minutes, so he can, he can tell us a little bit more about, uh, about how accurate is this information. But additionally, Colombia has a uh, smartphone adoption. So the rate of adoption is about 72% and up to 64% uh, from 62% in 2016. So there is a large push uh, from the government attention towards the creative industries. Um, the creative industries, uh, I have to say, is uh, one thing that, uh, you know, Colombia has been pushing on. Uh, for those that don't know about creative industries or the orange economy, uh, that's uh, kind of like Colombia is one of those countries that are leading in that area. Is any company that is related with any uh, type of um, a business that is in a TV uh, or is in um, video gaming or different areas that, that it comes with creativity. That's why the creative industries uh, name. Uh, so those are kind of the general aspects that you may need to know about the uh, uh, the overview. So uh, it's important also to know what happened during the pandemic and how this impacted uh, the country. So in this part, I want to mention that same as many other countries in the world, including Canada, Colombia was pretty much hit by the pandemic. Um, but as Colombia myself, I know we have passed through uh, too many uh, type of crises in the past, and um, this is another one in the checklist, I will say. Uh, so uh, Colombia, of course, is dealing with, uh, you know, whatever happened in the pandemic right now is, is getting much better. 
but I wanted to share with you also what you know what was the general impact in Colombia so uh, again being the fourth largest economy in Latin America um, you know Colombia has been trending up in the last 20 years at least in between 2012 and 2015 the poverty rate fell from 50 percent to 28 percent and Colombia has a um, track record of prudent management uh, of the economy uh, despite the um, downturns and um, you know uh, the many challenges that probably many of you already know but the COVID-19 uh, you know uh, damaged the economy in some levels resulting in the worst recession in almost 50 years uh, Colombia uh, this is as per Colombia statistic uh, statistical body the National Administrative uh, Department of Statistics, Danny. So uh, that claim uh, contracted by 6.8% 6, 6 uh, in 2020 from the pandemic is the largest drop in, in, in modern history, uh, estimated at $70 billion. So the Colombian peso actually reached out the, uh, uh, the all times high um this is something that is again getting in, into control right now but uh of course 2020 was a really hard year for many uh, many countries and this was not different uh from colombia so uh, the economy has uh rebounded strongly since the second half of 2020 um and we are expecting that uh, you know uh in the uh, second half and in the first half of uh 2022 you know, numbers will be improving. Uh, so uh, hopefully, uh, you know, we will be showing that in any other events and any other white papers we have in the future. But right now, uh, the economy is in recovery as it is in Canada as well. Uh, so I just wanted to mention also uh, some of the, uh, uh, you know, uh, probably statistics that, uh, that you may need to know about. For example, inflation is 3% uh, you know, rate in the second quarter of 2021. Uh, the unemployment rate, um, as per the last uh, numbers we could get, it was 15.8%. And then uh, you know, $271 billion was the GDP in Colombia reporter uh, in, at the end of 2020, representing 0.24% of the world economy. So that's how, uh, you know, the pandemic uh, basically is, is playing and hitting, uh, you know, the country. But again, uh, Colombians are very resilient people and uh, is a resilient also uh, ecosystem. And we have to say in, the, in regards of the uh, tech sector, we actually have seen um, more startups coming up and more investment coming up which is a trend I've seen also in some other uh, in some other countries. It's like in Canada, for example, we were having in 2019, I believe around 26 uh, unicorns detected. And then, uh, you know, by 2020, it was 40 and now it's about 51. So same kind of trending in, in Latin America is in, in technology. There are too many companies in technology that are doing pretty well and uh, basically is probably because of the pandemic and the adoption of uh, technology uh, for many of them. So I want to talk a little bit more about the startup ecosystem in Colombia and let you know that you know not everything happens in Bogota. So besides Bogota actually uh, has ranked the second highest out of Latin America cities for emerging the startup ecosystem in 2020 by the startup genome. The, the city uh, actually contains around uh, 28 ventures, uh, investment funds and banks, and 11 corporate ventures. Uh, five uh, angel networks, uh, investors that, that are located in, in the city and that also are actively participating um, with their clients, with the local clients that they have there. Uh, so, but Bogota is not attracting, again, all the, uh, all the attention for uh, the startup ecosystem. There is also Medellin. Medellin uh, was uh, voted uh, the world's most innovative city in 2013. For those that didn't know, we, we kind of mentioned this in the old white paper as well. And it continued trending, uh, you know, over the time 
because Medellin is a focus well, for innovation. It is actually, for many people, a preferred city uh, to put uh, establish a uh, business. I remember in particular uh, a company that I used to work uh, in Vancouver, they have a hard time deciding where they wanted to have the headquarters in Bogota, Medellin, and they finish up putting uh, their company in both cities. So it's, it's really difficult to say for sure, you know, this one is going to uh, going to do better than the other, depending on the uh, technology that you're bringing to, it may play a role on all this. So Medellin is the country's uh, fastest growing tech hub and one of the most affordable talent markets uh, in Latin America. This city is extremely uh, startup entrepreneurial and remote, uh, remote uh, work friendly and uh, uh, with numbers of co-working spaces and accelerators through the city. Now mention that, uh, you know, the local rent and some other, uh, you know, uh, real advantages that you guys are going to see in Medellin. Uh, but today, uh, you know, after this white paper, we are going to be talking with uh, Carlos Jaramillo and he is a part of Ruta N in Medellin and he probably will be sharing with you more and more information about uh, Medellin and the uh, startup ecosystem in there. So it will be even more updated of what I'm saying right now. So uh, some other uh, interesting uh, facts about Colombia. One of the most, uh, you know, uh, recognized unicorns in Latin America is Rappi. It's actually from Colombia. This company actually uh, grow fast in the whole Latin America. They are growing fast in so many other uh, countries. Uh, so it's, it's certainly a good example that we have in uh, Latin America that is coming from Colombia. 20% uh, of the uh, of Latin America venture capital during uh, 2019 went towards business in Colombia. Uh, so this is the second higher higher share in the region. 68% uh, 60, uh, of internet penetration rate in Colombia is as, as, as of January 2021. Uh, it reported over a million users uh, during 2020. And then uh, 191 startups were located in Colombia. Uh, you will see even more. I'm, I'm talking here about some general uh, numbers of companies that uh, you know are rising up every single year. Uh, in Colombia, for by 2020, it was like uh, around 191 new companies, but as you will see per sector, probably will be uh, even more. Uh, okay, so I'm going to go uh, for the next slide, and all this key information about the sectors are going to be. Uh, sorry, I was uh, sharing the going to share the other slide. It's going to be actually in the white paper more in deep. So you will find uh, even more information about these ecosystems. So now, regarding the sectors, uh, the, I'm going to talk in a specific about three sectors that are booming up in Colombia. And um, probably with our guest, we are going to talk even about more sectors. Uh, but uh, these are the main components, the main, uh, you know, uh, that are coming up uh, with uh, some good numbers. So the, the first one is actually the FinTech sector. Uh, the third largest fintech hub in Latin America, uh, Colombia is after Mexico and Brazil. Mexico and Brazil have always been kind of fighting for the first uh, place in fintech, the number of fintech companies that are raising in those countries. Colombia is the third one. So it's estimated that 200 fintech startups uh, are in operation right now in Colombia. Uh, this has grown 26% uh, from uh, 2020, with over 50 new startups introduced in that year, just only that year. Uh, so one of the uh, probably um, particularities of the sector that you, mean, you need to know is that in the, uh, in the last uh, two years, Colombia led the biggest regional uh, change in payment methods used by adult population in banking. So um, actually cash use uh, dropped 90, 93% uh, in 2018 to 80, um, sorry, from 80.5% 80, uh, 80 uh, from the last year. So some crucial segments that you need to know about FinTech, uh, what are the subsectors that, that are growing up? So payments and remittances, uh, online lending, 
uh, enterprise and financial management and scoring, identify and fraud. And in specific for those payments, the innovation uh, comes hand uh, by hand with the huge number of startups that have emerged in more uh, developed economies. So the other part that is important and it has a growth potential is the institution opportunities. The number of startups that are developing enterprise technologies for financial institutions grow by 80% over the past year. So in Colombia, fintech adoption uh, has been actually very important. 76% uh, of the population is using right now fintech services and the industry keep growing uh, in, in estimated by about 120% per year. So if you have a fintech company right now, guys, Colombia is a hot spot for that. And it's one of the early adopters that we have in fintech. So you should uh, totally go ahead and try to take your company there if it's in fintech for sure. And this is a great connection with Toronto. It's Bay in Toronto, one of the fintech hubs in North America, if not the most important fintech hub along with New York. I believe that uh, you know that special connection will be all, always there for Colombia and Toronto in particular. Um, in terms of uh, health tech, so this is the other sector that is growing up. There are over 100 uh, health tech startups in Colombia uh, that are making 6% of the Colombia gross domestic products uh, in 2018. So uh, the challenges that they have had uh, this year, this type of companies, is they uh, difficult to be new, uh, new companies uh, in the Colombian market. The Colombian market is mature and competitive with many foreign companies. Uh, selling uh, medical equipment and medical products. And it should be noted that the registration procedures uh, can often be challenging, uh, may uh, pose a barrier to the entry. But uh, in regards of the sector updates, uh, the National Institute, uh, uh, Institute for Health and Care Excellence and the Institute of Health Technology Assessment in Colombia have formalized a new working relationship based on sharing research and expertise. Under the agreement, NICE, as it's called the agreement, uh, will share its expertise in developing uh, work leading guidance for the health technology assessment uh, with the I a IETS, sorry <laughs> for my pronunciation in there. And the groups will also exchange their experiences of uh, developing a specific clinical guide guidelines and other areas of guidance and social quality standards. So some important sectors uh, or subsectors that you need to see, um, it, there is an increase in the quality of respiratory equipment of course, this may be an impact of the pandemic, right? Uh, so in addition, best uh, prospects for medical equipment manufacturings include our uh, chirurgical uh, instruments, electronic diagnosis, um, uh, orthopedic devices, hearing aids, uh, prosthetic devices, and diagnostic imaging equipment. So um, what is in growth potential right now in Colombia in this sector? Colombia is outpassing other Latin American countries with the rate of 5% growth in healthcare spending over 2019. Additional uh, public expenditure is raising almost twice as much as private expenditure. Um, there is something in addition for those that are in health tech that may be interested in this information, but there are also new hospitals. Uh, there are many high quality hospitals already in Colombia and clinics located all through Colombia and provide both general and specialized medical device device uh, services. And in 2019, there was a plan in Bogota for five hospitals uh, projects, two new hospitals to be constructed and three hospitals undergoing major upgrades. And the overhauls, uh, four of these projects were to be public-private partnerships and one done uh, through public works. 
Um, so maybe uh, some of the, um, uh, you know, of our guests today uh, may have more information about uh, this part about the hospitals and maybe somebody in the audience uh, may look at this more, uh, more in deep uh, for this part. And uh, the final sector I want to talk, because uh, we need to finish fast, we need to go with our speakers, so I'm not going to take too much of uh, your attention for what is the white paper. Uh, you will see all this information again in our website and you will find um, everything very much interested uh, for this sector. So this is uh, the ICT sector in general. And I will say in general, because there are too many subsectors that are coming up in the ICT. So the, the leading sectors in this area are cloud computing services, hardware and data hosting and processing services. So uh, in addition, there are other, se uh, other uh, sectors like uh, investment in digitalization, cybersecurity and blockchain solutions. Again, very much, uh, very uh, you know, connected in particular with the uh, uh, Ontario type of ecosystem that we have, in particular with uh, Toronto as well. So the IT sector in Colombia is expected to experience an increase uh, growth after COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, experts uh, predict that the Colombian IT market will be driving by increased connectivity and affordability of the equipment. Um, so just for you to know, uh, we also mentioned here in the presentation about the 5G pilot. Uh, this is, um, uh, you know, just to mention that 5G is not currently available uh, totally in Colombia, but it does have a plan uh, to have a commercial networks operating by 2022. And some of the 5G pilot projects were launched in May 2020 and will continue our that, uh, you know, uh, during a, uh, I believe during this year. So again, our guest speakers maybe have uh, more information about these pilots. Uh, some of the challenges, uh, and I'm going again very uh, fast in this part, just to start connecting our speakers. Uh, so trustworthy connections, please, as any other country, uh, it's very important that you have trustworthy connections uh, to, to work in the best way possible with locals. So always rely on the support of the Trade Commissioner Office. Um, either is the Pro-Columbia Trade Commissioner or the Canadian Trade Commissioner Office. They are very good in to actually provide connections. Of course, we do have also connections. We're a non-profit accelerator. So for uh, a, uh, Canadian startups or any other startups that are entering into this market, our connections are also available. But uh, you know, in our case, we work per projects. Um, I'm sorry, per programs. And this is uh, the reason why we don't do consulting. So we cannot work one on one with the companies. We do it uh, through different programs. But you know, you always have the trade commissioner office, uh, either from the Canadian government or the Colombian government. Uh, the Colombian taxation is also a little bit challenging for some companies. Uh, Colombia, uh, eh, you know, is still uh, feeling like uh, for many international companies, this is a complex process. Um, again, like uh, going to any other country, you're always going to face this type of challenges. So just take a, a careful consideration to be with a tax, uh, you know, consultant that knows about your background and knows how to help you uh, understanding taxes in Colombia. Enforcing contracts have, have always, uh, you know, a little bit difficult. I believe over the time actually has easier uh, in some ways, but, uh, you know, it, it seems like uh, for now it's like uh, somebody wants to uh, enforce a contract it can take up to four years. I believe that if you don't have the, uh, you know, right legal advice, maybe that will be the case. So you always have to connect with a good lawyer, good tax uh, consultant, and then you don't have this type of problems. And uh, acquiring financial support is all about, you know, maybe getting credit in Colombia or loans. Um, you know, grants are even more difficult. I never hear uh, really about that many grants in the country. But of course, uh, you always get uh, probably connections with investors of venture capital. We are talking more here about the challenge of uh, getting probably credit for companies. Uh, that could be a little bit complicated, especially for foreign companies. So some recommendation, guys. 
just uh, try to collaborate with locals, you know, make sure that you are meeting the people, make sure that you are spending your time uh, with the right people and knowing, uh, you know, who you are dealing with and, uh, you know, who is uh, this person connected with. So, uh, you know, it will guide you in a much uh, better way than trying to do everything by yourself. Uh, language barrier is always a problem for most of the companies, but this is a problem for any company when you go to any other market that is not yours. Uh, so there is always a certain amount of language barrier, but please uh, also take in consideration that in the tech ecosystem, there are many people that speak English. And also, you know, consider to have that personal touch with people because they really, uh, you know, um, they people like, uh, you know, to to spend the time to know you, and that uh, this is part of the cultural business behavior. This also happens in, uh, you know, Mexico and some any other countries that are experiencing probably uh, the same. Uh, so for that part, guys, I have finished my presentation. So I will start probably. Um, sorry, I'm closing here my presentation so i'm going to start probably uh talking with our speakers and i'm going to start uh calling them so they can uh probably uh you know share with you some of the comments over the white paper and their own uh you know experience uh coming up as uh, leaders in the ecosystem so i'm going to start with alvaro concha and hello Hey, Alvaro, nice to hey, see you. Nice to see you too. Yeah, uh, Alvaro is actually the uh, running the Trade Commissioner Office here at Pro Colombia in Toronto. So Alvaro has helped in the past too many companies, uh, Canadian companies to understand the Colombian market uh, and vice versa, right? Colombians also coming here. So welcome, Alvaro. Thank you very much, Miriam, and uh, very happy to be here. But to be you honest, it's, it's, not, it's not me, it's our team who actually does all the job. <laughs> that's true, that's true. I always forget that, you know, there is a lot of people behind ProColombia, yeah. you know, helping. Um, also, uh, a welcoming uh, Carlos Jaramillo. Uh, he's working with Rutan in Medellin. So Carlos will be just uh, connecting now. Sometimes hoping can do a little bit, a few seconds to connect people. Hey, Carlos. Hi, Miriam, how are you? Good, Carlos. Nice to I see you here. <laughs> yeah. So, guys, uh, I would like to uh, start asking you because I don't know if if Angela is here. Angela, you can always share your uh, video and audio, so we can also uh, share your screen and everything. But um, while Angela is connecting, I'm going to start working with you too. So I want uh, you two to please introduce yourself and what your companies are doing uh, so people uh, understand better what what is what is the, exactly the services that you provide. So I will go first with Alvaro. Okay, Miriam, thank you. So once again, so just just let me start by, by what your thanking. companies are doing uh, so people uh, understand oh. better what, what <laughs> I'm going to be here. You provide. So I will go first with Alvaro. Okay, Miriam, thank you. So once again, could you please Angela, could you please mute yourself? Uh, or Carlos, you too, so we don't hear the echo. Angela, can you hear me? Can you please mute yourself? Uh, that perfect. Sometimes that happens. So Alvaro, you can go ahead. Okay. So um, the good afternoon to all. And just let me start by thanking you and uh, Latam and Latam Startups and you, Miriam, for the for the kind invitation of being part of today's event in Colombia in the spotlight. And once again, this is an excellent opportunity to showcase and promote Colombia as a tech destination for Canadian companies willing to explore our market. Um, as you all have been already introduced, my name is Alvaro Concha. I'm the Colombian Government Trade Commissioner based here in Toronto. Uh, work uh, with a team uh, um, that looks after investment uh, opportunities and uh, trade opportunities and tourism. Uh, so it's uh, we're uh, we're a um, highly skilled team based here at your service, uh, looking to give you all the best information in order for you to navigate and to explore and to actually uh, um, choose the right opportunities for your companies in, in our country. That's what, in a very nutshell, what we do. 
<laughs> Thank you, Alvaro. So, Carlos, I'll go with you now. So, can you please introduce Ruta N and yourself? Okay. Uh, thank you, Miriam, for inviting us. And also thanks to Luisa and Samuel for setting all this up. Uh, Ruta N is the Science, Technology and Innovation Center of Colombia. Uh, what we do is we help companies to grow, specifically in Medellin, the second largest city of Colombia, as you told us during the presentation of the white paper medium. And what we offer is uh, we can connect you with capital. We offer infrastructure solutions. Uh, anytime you need office space, we, we offer that. We can also attract and develop talent for you guys specifically if, if, for your operation here in Medellin. As well, we as well we we connect you. We we give you connections to our innovation ecosystems, also to, to access the market, and we also help you to develop your business. Basically, my my role in in Ruta N is right now I'm the talent and job creation project manager of Ruta N. So uh, thanks again for inviting us. Yeah, and now I'm going to re-add uh, Angela right now. So hopefully she doesn't right. have any problems right with now, her. Uh, sí, it's still with the echo. Let's see. Okay. Angela, if you have a double screen, that maybe sometimes happen. But uh, yes. you are you are more like, a, a, you know, the entrepreneur in this side. So we have, uh, you know, government, another institution that helps startups, and you are the entrepreneur. Can you please shortly introduce yourself? Hi, yeah, finally. Thank you so much for having me this morning with this gentleman uh, in, the, in, this, in this panel. Yes, definitely. My, my name is Angela Suarez. And as, as Alvaro said, we are a team effort, a team family effort as an entrepreneur in a company called uh, Cafe Tio Conejo. Um, this is a family who produce happiness and we develop trust through all our, our coffee and with different lines that, that, that we have in, in our businesses. Yes, we are the entrepreneurs. We are not a startup. We are more in the, in the PME section, but I'll be more than happy to let uh, the world know uh, things, fantastic things that have been happening in Manizales. It's exactly the place that where my, my company is at. Uh, with the connections, with the entrepreneurship, what the, the thing that's happening in the last, I don't know, maybe six or seven years uh, before pandemic and after and after pandemic, I think Colombia has been preparing for different areas. And as Alvaro says, tourism, it is a huge um, movement, uh, 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 a really important aspect that you may consider now in Colombia. Thank you, Angela. So now if you can mute yourself, then I'm, I'm going to start with a few questions and uh, we are going to, uh, you know, try to put as, um, as good and short as possible for the audience. Because after this, we are going to networking. Uh, so my first question goes for Carlos. So Carlos, what are the new technologies trending right now in Colombia, um, you know, maybe raising during the pandemic or uh you know what you have seen during the pandemic that maybe is booming up in technology okay i'll say that um obviously the pandemic uh, has brought uh, a lot of challenges uh, remote work came uh, uh, stronger than, than ever and i'll say in our country i'll say uh, ed tech is now raising up a lot, a lot, because Colombia is a, a really, a, we can, Colombia can be the, the I would say the talent and tech hub of Latin America. So they, it, tech companies are booming up a lot and also e-commerce, everything related to e-trade, because in example, um, there's a lot of, of malls in Colombia and the 80% of the revenue of those malls is the physical presence of people in the mall. And that changed suddenly from one day to another. At the same time, the greatest, uh, the great majority of companies in Colombia are small size companies, and they don't even have a digital transformation strategy. So e-commerce is booming up as well. 
Okay, thank you, Carlos. Um, Alvaro, uh, what do you think, uh, you know, do you have anything to add? You can add, uh, but my question for you will be, what are the type of technologies that you envision that uh, Colombia will need post pandemic? Okay, so let me let me let me tap on 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 the first questions, if if, if I may, and I'll I'll just yes. mention that uh, the new technologies that Colombia somehow is is um, trending, uh, or the technologies adoption in Colombia is pretty much at all levels. Um, and one of the things that is more that uh, amazed us a bit more is how seniors are somehow embracing technology as never before. Sectors that are thriving, if you want to touch specific sectors, Carlos mentioned ed tech, health tech, uh, technologies that enable social inclusion, fintech, you mentioned fintech a couple of times, and, and I think that's, some, that's something that we can go a, a bit deep, e-commerce, cybersecurity. Actually, cybersecurity is one of the big lessons that, uh, or one of the lessons that we also learned after the pandemic. The interesting fact is that also companies are using AI, blockchain, machine learning, and new audiovisual technologies such as AR, VR, XR to develop new and innovative solutions. Colombia is the best location for BPOs and KPO operations in, 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 in Latin America. And uh, one of the few countries where tech talent is available. And uh, there's a mission. Uh, it's a program called Mission TIC 2022 that actually aims to train over 100,000 people in, uh, in programming skills to uh, challenge the fourth industrial revolution, to, to, to face those challenges. So that's in terms of the technology trends. Now, coming back to your specific question, the one that you addressed me, um, I'd like to somehow also add to the figures, the macroeconomic figures that you mentioned were included in the white paper. And um, I just want to mention three facts. Colombia's economy is, is somehow forecast to grow in 2021, according to IMF and the World Bank, from a range of 46 to 4.9%. There are other measures that uh, the World Bank said that maybe it's 5.6, but let's stay with the, the, the first range. You also mentioned uh, inflation rate. The inflation rate, according to IMF in 2021, is going to be around, we're going to be closing the year around 2.5%. And you also mentioned something about GDP. And the, the good fact here, other than the big number of the GDP, is that Colombia in the past 50 years, we've managed to increase our GDP seven times, to multiply our GDP by seven times. And by 2025, we are expected to achieve the largest GDP growth in the region. That's above the other countries that are all, always in, in contention. The government is actively promoting tech entrepreneurship in the country. Institutions like Impulsa, and in institutions like Ruta N, where actually Carlos works uh, and leads, uh, have programs and partnerships to develop Colombian startups and strengthen the ecosystem. Three out of the five main cities of the country are considered today or are within the top 20 Latin American cities to develop the uh, startup cities, the startup uh, ecosystem. Those are Medellin, Bogota, and Cali. There's also a good fact here is that uh, the development and the different hubs, hubs are arising on different cities other than the, than the ones that are known for that. So that's pretty much what, uh, what I can share in, in, in this. I don't want to go and extend myself too much. No, thank you so much, Alvaro, for uh, giving us that perspective. And now I'm going to Angela. Angela, um, uh, maybe if you want to add anything else to the other two points are good, but my question for you will be more about the lessons learned during the pandemic. You are a business owner, uh, you know, in a traditional market. I have too many questions like, did you adopt the technology? How did you deal with the pandemic? Like, can you give us that perspective from a Colombian entrepreneur? And uh, let us know some of the experience. Well, I think uh, from the entrepreneurship side, we 
we learn a lot in an expedited pace during the pandemic how we can accelerate the the internet aspect the e-commerce the 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 all of the of the steps that we've been taking so long in some points with the pandemic definitely um increase the velocity for everyone to 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 improve in the web pages and the in the way that we can approach to the clients in the way that we uh have to be creative with the new with the new aspects in, in, in colombia but but uh we um understood that with uh, startups and the and, and with fintech uh, we can grow as an economy, as, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a business, as a, we really need people to work in the startups to, to, to massify the, the, the companies, to, to be able to get uh, everybody engaged and grow as, 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 as a region, as a community. And, and definitely this is something that we learned during the pandemic, that the connections that we, that, that the, that we create verbally or personal or personally before we enhance those during the the, the, the time of the pandemic and i think those those are the the, the things that we that, that that we learned during the, during the pandemic mm -hmm. sorry yeah. thank you Angela. very nice and i i feel like uh, that kind of was the experience for most of the startups during the pandemic especially those that were in traditional sectors so Carlos, I'm going to go back to you. Uh, maybe you can share about the lessons learned as well, but I have another uh, uh, you know, question for you. And it's in regards of the partnerships. Uh, how international companies can partner uh, with institutions like you in uh, yours in Colombia, like uh, Rutan or any other institutions? What, what is your main recommendation? Okay, something uh, uh, I want to share about lessons of the pandemic is that for startups, I'll say the most important lesson is that storms, you cannot avoid the storms, but at the same time, you have to be in a permanent planning and strategy on your startup all the time. I know it's, it's, it's hard because operation has the, the operation of the business is like a, on a daily basis, you have to de do all every day every day doing everything but you cannot stop planning on working on your strategy and the second thing i would like to say about how we can partner the first of all is that one of the greatest things about colombia is that we work as a team so my suggestion is the first step is to go to a uh, pro colombia in toronto with alvaro and uh, with, with ProColombia, what we do is we create a lot of value from Rutaine specifically to work in Medellin, right? And what we offer is um, we can give you access. So please just let us know what you need. We'll solve it and, and we're ready. So we can connect you with capital, as I told you at the beginning, as well, we can develop a talent strategy for your company. Just let us know what you need in the immediate run, in the medium run, and in the long run. We'll, we'll solve it for you. What we do is we articulate all the ecosystem so you can have the right talent at the right time. And also, we can, we can probably connect you with other peers in the innovation ecosystem. And we can help you also adapt your ideas uh, to the Colombian market. Even though Colombia is is a really interesting market i'll say that our invitation is to see colombia has a platform uh, colombia has a place to set up a really productive operation and to serve other markets from colombia and um, finally i'll say that if you're looking for office space that is changing a lot with the pandemic we're also ready so just let us know what you need and then uh, we can definitely solve it Thank you, Carlos. I think Angela wants to add something there. Yes, I would like to to add something about Carlos because I think Colombia and some and some cities like Manizales also has the the universities that we are working together. We learn that it the, 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 that we are better if we work as a team, and we in Manizales understood uh, long ago that we as an ecosystem with the universities, with Pro Colombia and the government 
and the and the and the entrepreneurship uh, world, we can we can grow faster and 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 we build better. And and I would like to offer to you the same. I think um, through the the, the entire ecosystem that Colombia has been created during those years, uh, we we are we are seeing the results faster than we before that we, we worked together but but we were isolated in some senses we we can say that now working together as a team uh for instance in manizales with manizales mass that that we have a program where we can work together the government the 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 companies the kids that they are in in, in the universities and and, and the um pro colombia for instance we, we we are seeing the results much faster and, and i think will alleviate the investors in canada or in, from on it or other place to 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 put a, a step on colombia and i think we are we are ready mm -hmm. thank you thank you angela so uh carlos yeah. you want to ask something else yeah i i i uh, i really appreciate angela's comment and i just forgot to tell you guys that uh, what happens with the pandemic is that a lot of companies that were getting into Colombia, they stopped their, their expansion projects. Mm -hmm. And they are interested in hiring services from Colombian companies or talent in Colombia. As well, we from Bruta N, we are ready to help you to find the right talent. It doesn't matter if you're not coming to the country. We are ready also to help you find the, that remote worker that has the same skills than a Canadian one or, or someone from the US, uh, um, we can help you with that too. Okay, no, that's a good uh, good ad ad addition to the conversation. I don't know if Alvaro, you want to end up these comments with something else because I'm going to the last question with you guys. Um, I think that the message is we all work together. Uh, mm -hmm. We have a great partnership with Ruta N the city uh the 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 add value proposition or the value proposition that the city puts on top of the table for the con for for the colombian canadian company sorry in this case is an excellent option uh for 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 the companies to consider so and that's what makes it you know not only challenging because you have to decide where to go uh, but also very e it eases out uh, the way to 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 control and to to navigate the country and tackle some some of the barriers that you mentioned at the beginning um, mm -hmm. and, and and it's just you know if you team up with the right person and if you team up with the right organizations and you kind of like have a, a soft landing program built by your for yourself that will tackle a lot of those barriers. Uh, um, I, I would like to, to, to mention something about the lessons um, that I've, you know, took notes. I think this sector, which is no different from, than the country itself, is the re resilience of the, of, of the sector and of, of, of the companies and of the country itself. itself. Uh, I think that uh, um, the quick adoption of new technologies that company change you know things change very quickly and then and startups need to understand it to be ready to adopt those changes um working remotely is possible now right and and and, and everybody uh, understood that and then and, and in most cases is it's why not even even more efficient so so maybe that's going to be a, a game changing you know in, in looking forward so that's that's pretty much what i wanted to to add okay guys uh so we just have uh probably one minute uh to finish this conversation and this this uh, last question is about the recommendation that you may have for any international startup that is looking right now to enter uh to colombia uh so maybe for 2022 uh i will start with alvaro what in one word maybe in one sentence what will be your main recommendation for them how about one paragraph? Okay, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> so, Colombia offers one of the best opportunities in Latin America for startups, and the country is well known for being early adopters of new technologies. Colombia ranks top five as e-government services, according to the OECD, even higher than Canada. Just keep that in mind. Get to know the market and its, and its opportunities with local partners that we already mentioned, and your first step might be 
here in Canada to contact us, uh, Pro Columbia Canada, uh, in, in our team. We have the portfolio of services for companies considered entering the, com the, the market and check out this. Our services are free. So here we are. Perfect. Thank you, Alvaro. Uh, Angela, what is your main recommendation for uh, startups looking yeah. to enter in Colombia? I think uh, that there is a huge opportunity for people that they are thinking to work in, in, a, in a, a startup. I wish the, the, the Canadian companies should aim to promote and to prevent the corruption in, in countries like Latin America. And I think this is a huge uh, impact that, that, the, that you from the startup part can help the countries like us. And I think this is a huge opportunity to work in that pattern, to create more jobs, more security, uh, less violence, because through that money, through that projects, uh, those startups can work in, the, in, in the preventing the corruption. And I think this is a huge uh, impact for us because we are good people. We have a really good workers. We have a really good energy and, and welcome everyone to our country, but we need to an extra help in that in that aspect to help the the the, the country in the corruption part okay thank you angela uh carlos i'll give you the last words then for uh, uh you know recommendations for startups going to colombia okay so no basically colombia is booming up uh, i think the country is doing a really good job uh now a competition is not about countries and is not even about cities. It's about innovation ecosystems. So Medellin's innovation ecosystem, specifically, I talk about Medellin because it's, it's what I do, right? And uh, it's a really consolidated one. And we are ready to give you the right connections and to make your life easier. So allow us to do it. That's, that will be our main recommendation. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, to Alvaro, Angela, and Carlos for being here today and for sharing your expertise uh, with everyone here. And uh, your connection will be very important for those Canadian companies looking for uh, 2020 to do something uh, in, in regards of expansion. Being said that, remember, we have the Canada Tech uh, Accelerator program coming up in November for Canadian companies that are looking to enter into this bootcamp and maybe start doing the market research and connections in Latin America for 2022. And our next event is Chile in the Spotlight. Uh, so that will be in September. Uh, we will learn about the Chilean startup ecosystem and what is trending there. Uh, so everyone, I hope that you guys have a, a nice a networking session. Carlos, Angela, Alvaro, you can go to networking now if you want to meet with some of the people in the audience. Thank you so much, everyone.